morning friends this is yagdev and i am presenting the current affair for the month of august at empower is so we are discussing about various things that makes the news and in the news we see that how viacom satyagraha was held then what was the news regarding maharaja ranjit singh and his contribution towards india then there was avinna tagore then uh, various news about banking services now we see about something in gs3 economics that is animal livestock and rearing the government of india has created bovine breeding program and rashtriya nakul swasthya patra so in the covid pandemic situation we also see that various kind of livestock and agriculture dairy sectors contribute highest during the pandemic situation and reemerging the agro economy to a wider range so in this we see that the annual growth rate of 8.15% is contributed by the livestock and bovine breeding sectors and from 2014-15 to 1920 and it has again provide employment of about 8.8% of the people so it is creating employment also and it provides livelihood to the two third rural economy and leads to the contribution of 16% of income of small farm household as leverage as 14% of rural household plus 34% of total agricultural gdp in 2019 and 2020 remember that that agriculture is contributing 34% of gdp now livestock sector and animal husbandry is a state subject under 7th schedule of constitution of india and further it provides the 20th livestock census in india that is world's highest livestock owner being first in india in indian population so india is having highest livestock around the world second largest poultry in the world and second largest production of fish and fisheries so remember this facts for your cleans point of view that india is having second largest production of fisheries first largest in dairy products first in dairy second in fisheries in the world now next part goes for the income source of subsidiary that is again a part of livestock sector it also provides the farmers economy to a larger extent by providing the dung that is used for making gases cow dung yani ki jo gai ka gobar aur bhaiso ka waste product hai that is also used as fertilizers manures and composite also that again used for the organic farming so it also used for the bullocks for plugging carefing and transportation of input and output products from the rural market to the urban sector so ye transportation ke liye bhi useful ho gaye in terms of bullock carts then there is food and nutrition security provided by the dairy sector that is milk cheese paneer and so on further it creates the huge employment to the unskilled rural youth so an unskilled rural youth gets employment in the dairy sectors also now common diseases that are affecting the bovine programs are also discussed here in order to cater a good uh, process and working of the livestock sector in the rural economy रूरल इकोनॉमी में बोवाइंस के लिए अच्छे काम के लिए उनके रोग मुक्त होने की आवश्यकता है सो देर इज अ डिजीज दैट आर टॉक्ड हियर फर्स्ट इज द फुट एंड माउथ डिजीज एफ एम डी सेकेंड इज पेस्ट डिजीज दैट इज कॉर्ड बाय द जर्म्स दैट आर प्रोड्यूस इन साइड द एनिमल बॉडीज एंड दैट ग्रोज बाय डिफेक्टिव इन्वायरमेंट इन साइड द विलेज एरिया एंड थर्ड इज गोज फॉर द क्लासिकल स्वाइन फीवर सी एस एफ that is swine fever inside the animal body time and again and it is a viral tendency also then fourth is the poultry that is avian influenza bird flu and rani khet disease that is again in the poultry sector remember this fact 
Now, there are certain programs introduced by government of India in order to provide the security and better development of animal husbandry, livestock and fishery sector. So, the program goes for some mission on fodder and feed development, then skill development mission, technology transfer extension in terms of national livestock mission. So, government ne national livestock mission start kiya friends and in this mission we are having Rashtriya uh, skill development program then Rashtriya Gokul mission is the second part of this program which is leading to indigenous breeds to selective breeding of their breeding significantly then there is a Gopal Ratna award to the cow cultivator so Gopalakon ke liye there is a Gopal Ratna award and Kam Dhinu award for encouraging farmers breeding societies rather indigenous establishment of the indigenous cows. Then next is e Pashu Heart Portal for connecting breeding and farmer. Then there is Pashu Sanjeevani again. Fourth is e Pashu Heart and fifth is Pashu Sanjeevani providing various facilities of animals in terms of animal health card that is Nakul Swasthya Patra along with UID identification, national program for dairy development, again for dairy development, there is national program for dairy development, for development of the breeding animals, milching animals that produce more and more milk that is needed for the development of animals and sharing of their products inside the domestic and international market. Now, there is a disease control program launched by government of India that is scheme for livestock disease protection and that again goes for the prevention and control of the diseases that occur time and again inside the animal body. It aims for providing financial assistance by centrally sponsored scheme and it is again supported by state also. Now, next part which is making the news is advanced metering system that is again a very critical part of today's electricity management and electricity distribution in the household consumption. So, in household we see that there is certain kind of meter as a meter rehta hai gharo mein is mein ki there is certain rising in the reading and you calculate your watt consumption in kilowatt hour so, KWH may aap consumption ko notify karte hain in terms of smart meter, then communication network, meter data acquisition system, meter data management system and two way communication system between customers as well as the officers. Now, the customers that is domestic family yani ki aapne aapke ghar ke log jo ki ghar mein fridge, television, computer, mobile phones and all the electrical gadgets they are using and thus they are consuming more and more electricity. Now, what is the measurement of that electricity that is being transferred to the domestic devices that is readed and calculated by this meter and which is also now connected with the internet by measuring electricity at real time, connecting and disconnecting services then monitoring and detect tampering, mitigate potential and faster service distribution for the domestic appliances. So, it also caters the peak demand and manage energy consumption and the cost. So, there is peak demand in winter season when we use too much of so heaters and ventilators so winter mein hum bahut sare room heaters blowers etc use karte hain that again there is the demand then there is summer season where we use too much of fans air conditioners and refrigerator that again raise the demand of electricity consumption in the domestic use and that is again calculated by the advanced metering instrument now let us look at the advanced smart meter so, as a meter hota hai mitro aapke ghar mein aur iski rating aise rehti hai in terms of LED. So, there is LED composition, then there is a metering unit, there is a 
capacitor and diagnostic device that counts the units consumed by a person or a household or a industry or a corporation household or corporation ke dwara jo bhi consumed ho rahi hai in kilowatt hour that is calculated so that data is sent to the utility utility based system offices and that is uses in a price information system that is control of pricing and signals leading to program communication thermostat which is again calculating the electricity being used and the heat dissipated it again controls the application of equipments and alliances devices automatically respond to price signals overriding the possibilities then there is customer premises in terms of household or any industry so that consumption is again tackled and calculated by this advanced metering system now customers make decision about the uses by self he can also take the uses and value calculation of whatever units he has been consuming through various kind of electrical appliances and devices he can look into the devices such as fans refrigerator air conditioners and coolers which are consuming huge electricity and he can take the decision on how to reduce the electrical consumption next part is the security issue of india gs paper 3 internal security so there is a facial recognition system developed by indian intelligence agencies in order to recognize the criminals and track the criminals their movement their planning and their activity so in various cases we see that there are various criminals they create crime and offenses they run away from the sites such as chain snatchers and there are theft robberies dacoities bank robbery so those cases that are very grave in nature and cognizable offenses as per the court of law they are not being detected so facial recognition device is a device that recognizes the facial expressions takes over the facial system by taking technology government approved the automated facial recognition system nafrs that is national automated facial recognition system and that makes the news by confirming the identity of individual who is coming to the class and there is a pan india movement which is issued by the national crime record bureau and there should be a mobile and web based application hosted in delhi as per the crime prevention and detection so let us see that how different type of biometrics works for the detection of personality detection of personality ke liye kaise koi bhi device kaam karte hain so there is a typing pattern by a particular person that is again a individual identity तो एक इंडिविजुअल की एक टाइपिंग टेंडेंसी होती है इंडिविजुअल हैज़ अ डिफरेंट एंड डिस्टिंक्ट यूनिक नेविगेशन स्टाइल इंडिविजुअल हैज़ यूनिक सिग्नेचर एंड अ फेस रिकॉग्निशन दैट इज अगेन यूनिक देन आई स्कैनर्स विच टेक द रेटिना इन अगेन आधार कार्ड वी सी दैट देयर इज ए बायोमेट्रिक्स दैन देयर इज डी एन ए केमिकल एंड वेन बायोमेट्रिक्स वेन रिकॉग्निशन voice recognition fingerprints physical style and interaction style now what is the issue with such kind of devices so in article 21 of the constitution of india we have right to privacy and which guarantees that every individual in his life and in his individuality and privacy he can maintain his record by himself he is not forced to share his personal data personal information and personal records then this is again a critical part of leading the all the aspects of a individual by tracing fingerprint voice recognition there is again personal data sharing and data issues 
that goes with the private identity as we see in the Aadhaar case. Aadhaar ke case mein humne dekha tha mitro ki kaise jo bhi data rehta hai Aadhaar ke through bahut saare private agencies ke paas chala ja raha hai and they are using in their personal manner they are making the marketing value of their those data or whatever we like whatever we purchase and such kind of possibilities are calculated so there is a voice recognition retina scan for an individual there is key stroke dynamics and apart from the aforementioned indicators other biometrics are emerging like ear authentication each individual has distinct ear criteria eye criteria spoken and voice footprint criteria and foot dynamic and gait recognition style of walking that is very unique so how the face detection system works it detects the face by taking image from the camera तो एक इंडिविजुअल की इमेज ये डिटेक्ट करता है देन इट एनालाइजेस द फेस ऑफ अ पर्सन इट टेक्स द इमेज फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इट रिकॉग्नाइजेस दैट इमेज एंड देन इट कन्वर्ट्स द इमेज इनटू अ डेटा दैट इज अ बाइनरी और एनी अदर फॉर्मेट देन इट लीड्स टू फाइंडिंग ऑफ अ मैच दैट वेदर द पर्सनैलिटी इज अ ऑफेंडर or any criminal record that is again traced by the face recognition system next part is women in the armed forces so it makes a uh, huge issues in the news that women having a less contribution in the armed forces such as paramilitary forces and army forces which again create a problem in the gender equality Article 14 of India pushes for the equality in terms of gender and article 15 proves for the equality in employment now constitution gives this fundamental rights for you to have a selection in the army as well as other armed forces by women but there is not so far criteria so let us look into it now a uh, background shows that in 1888 first introduction of women was done by a british raj to so, british raj mein pehla introduction hua jab ki women ko nurse ke roop mein army mein dala gaya aur mahilaon ka fir एज एन ऑफिशियल एंट्री वॉज डन इन नाइनटीन आजादी के इतने वर्षों बाद यू सी इन नाइनटीन नाइन टू देर वेयर इन आर्मी एयरफोर्स एंड नेवी इन शॉर्ट सर्विस कमीशन एंड वुमेन स्पेशल एंट्री स्कीम दैट लीड्स टू ज्वाइनिंग ऑफ वुमेन एज इन द ऑफिशियल कैडर बाय द गवर्नमेंट फोर्सेज देन इन ईयर टू थाउजेंड सिक्स डब्ल्यू एस स्कीम वुमेन in special entry scheme was replaced with short service commission regarding to women in the period of 10 years to 14 years fir mahilaon ke sath unki short service ko badhaya gaya from 10 years to 14 years that is again a point to remember in 2015 one of the turning point women in military in indian air force decided to induct them into the fighter stream and in 2021 excluding the medical wing in which women have been servicing for decades but in terms of percentage women still form a part of the military 0.56 of army 1.8% of air force and 6.5% of the navy so this is data since 2021 remember this fact and quote it into your mains answer also now women in different sectors of the Indian society contributes recruitment excluding medical roles so in army we see that 50% are male and 29% are female in navy there is 42% of male 27% of female and in indian air force we see 30, 44% of 
male population 39 percent of female. Now, some initiative to induct women in the armed forces that is SANIC school. From the schooling system, we see that education of women as a armed forces trainer has been again a part of Indian society where women also get educated in the SANIC school. Further, they also goes in NCC training. So, NCC A, B, C level ki training mahilaon ki ho rahi hai where we see that women are also getting indulged in the rifle training, arms training and military and martial training also that again makes the women prepare for getting entry into the armed forces. So, Sainik school entry was started in a period of 2018, Sainik school chingship in Mizoram claimed huge proportion of women children in the admission of it and there is admission in the National Defense Academy NDA that is starting from a gender equality. So, UPSC again talks about gender equality that is a part of development of society and modernization of Indian women in the various system that are taking part in this uh, armed forces. Now, Ministry of Defense versus Babita Punia case that is important judgment by Supreme Court of India. Again, remember this important judgment. So, this case ke judgment may Supreme Court ne kya order the friends? Supreme Court granted that permanent commission initially in way of the armed forces in 2003, public interest litigation was launched against the verdict of court that there must be a right to equality for the women person in the armed forces. Armed forces may mahilao ke liye bhi equal opportunity honi chahiye in different ranks such as officers, staffs and other entries. Further, Delhi High Court held that the women SSC officers in the Indian Armed Forces are a part of the male forces also and they can also take part in non-compliance in the High Court judgment. In 2020, Supreme Court held that Babita Punia case upheld that the women should enter into various positions of Armed Forces officers level and director C women entry in the Indian Army combat support at the officers level. So, women officers granted PC will undergo special training courses. So, unhe officials training ke liye special training di jayegi. They should be provided a distinct kind of physical as well as mental training in order to develop their potential for the higher leadership opportunity in the Indian Army.